This is Wild Chronicles. Florida manatees could be called the hippies of the undersea world. These mild-mannered vegetarians inhabit the fresh and salt water along much of coastal Florida, feeding off of the seagrass that grows in abundance here. With few natural predators, life seems idyllic for the gentle beast until you factor in humans. Nicole Adamy of the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service studies the manatee. Most of the sirenians all over the world are endangered, and um, I'd like, you know, I just hope to be able to add something to that. And so they're around for my kid to see when he grows up. <laughs> Every day, more than a thousand people move to Florida. They come here in part for the same reasons manatees do, to enjoy Florida's warmth. The people bring their water toys. Florida is home to nearly one million boats. The reckless use of these watercraft, as well as entanglement by fishing gear, pollution, and habitat destruction, make humans the number one threat to the survival of manatees. Nicole is trying to figure out ways to keep the manatees safe. I'd like to be able to look at some of the entanglement issues and the, the animals that are getting entangled in all this fishing line. To begin exploring ways to protect the manatees from entanglement and to understand more about the behavior of these aquatic creatures, National Geographic's Critter Cam team will deploy special camera units on some of the animals. But to work out the details of this new deployment, we're going to need the help of a few experts. Hugh and Buffett are residents of Moat Marine Laboratory in Sarasota, Florida. They're specially trained to participate in research, helping scientists answer questions about manatees. And Nicole has a lot of questions. We'd also like to look at boating issues. Um, what exactly is happening? Is an animal approaching a boat? Are they looking for food? Are they looking for attention? Um, physical interaction? Or are these boats moving towards the animals? And the animals are trying to orient themselves out of the direction of the boats. We don't know what's going on there. The first step proves to be the most difficult. How to keep a critter cam on a manatee. Suction cups have worked well for sea turtles and whales, but not so well for manatees. It's just, what's difficult about these animals is, you know, their skin. It's like elephant skin. It's rough, it's moist, it's constantly sloughing off, and it has little sparse hairs all over it. So we're having one hell of a time figuring out how to keep the stuff on the animals. Maybe some type of harness. You and Buffett demonstrate the flaws in that design. A belt type system seems to do the trick. Once the team puts it in place, you and Buffett behave normally. A good sign. Manatees generally surface every few minutes to breathe. Make sure they don't get trapped underwater. A weak link has been built into the belt to allow the manatee to break free if the harness becomes entangled. Now, we're ready to take the next step. Deployment in the wild. Belize's southern lagoon is the perfect place. And we join Dr. Buddy Powell of the Wildlife Trust. Okay, there's definitely one here. The manatee is encircled in a net. Alonzo, can you move over to your right a little bit? Then isolated by team members. the manatee's vital signs and then puts on the critter cam. Wow. 
five. Two. Manatees are tougher on the gear than their captive cousins, but were able to get a few successful deployments. And we have a camera. The team is rewarded with their first look at life through the eyes of a wild manatee. The animal wearing the camera immediately joined a nearby group. Yeah, that's his nose. Providing a new and intimate window into the group's social activities. It will take months, if not years, for the research team to decode these images. But it is an encouraging first demonstration that Critter Cam can provide new insights into manatee behavior.